Whether you're calibrating pressure, temperature, or electrical equipment, you'll encounter many of the same terms and concepts in the metrology industry. This video will go over some of the most common terminology and how it applies to various calibration procedures. All of these terms can be found in the International Vocabulary of Metrology 4th Edition, available for free online. If you haven't seen part 1 of this series, we recommend watching that first as it covers the basics of metrology and calibration. Let's get started. The accuracy of a device is defined as the closeness between the measured value from that device and the true value being generated. Since the true value of what is being measured exists with or without a device measuring it, for example the pressure within a pump, accuracy is better understood as a concept rather than a value. When a device's accuracy is stated within its specifications, it represents the maximum difference between the measured value and the true value. A device with an accuracy of 1% is guaranteed to give a reading within 1% of the true value. This means that lower accuracy values are actually more accurate, because they have a smaller range around the true value. Due to the way manufacturers specify accuracy with a numerical value, device accuracy is often confused with uncertainty in a measurement. When measuring a value, many variables can affect the closeness of the measurement to the true value. These combined variables, including device drift over time, the stated uncertainty of the reference standard used to calibrate the device, environmental factors, human error, and more will encapsulate the full uncertainty of the measurement. So while the specified accuracy of a device is technically an uncertainty range, it does not always account for the full uncertainty of a measurement. A simple way to think about it is that accuracy is usually used in measurement, while uncertainty is usually used in calibration. Within the specified accuracy range are upper and lower acceptance limits for pass or fail decisions. The difference in these limits to the respective specifications is called the guard band, which may change depending on the accuracy ratio between the test device and the reference standard. For the next few terms, let's imagine a pressure calibration test that checks five different set points from 0 to 100 psi, using a reference gauge and a gauge under test. If a measurement set point is taken multiple times under the same conditions, for example if this test was cycled up and down multiple times, the difference between recordings from the same set points is referred to as the precision of a measurement. When plotted on a graph, these test values will form a line. The closeness of this line to a perfectly straight line is the linearity of the measurement. A calibration curve will be applied to the gauge under test in an attempt to get its readings as linear as possible throughout its testing range. This act of correcting the linearity of these measured values is what it means to adjust a measurement device. This is different from a calibration, where the device may already be within specification and not need to be adjusted. When cycling a test like this up and down, the output of the measurement can change depending on the direction from the previous value, for example during pressurization and depressurization. This phenomenon is called hysteresis and must be recorded as it can be a significant source of uncertainty in the measurement. When realizing a set point, a technician will often wait for the measured value to stabilize for a moment before taking a reading. The stability of a device is its ability to remain constant over time and will often be characterized as a percentage of the full range of the device. Lastly, the drift of a device is how far its measured values have moved over time. Sensor design, environmental conditions, misuse, sudden shock, and more will all cause drift in a measurement device, which is why most devices need to be calibrated at timely intervals depending on the application. Understanding the vocabulary of the metrology industry is crucial to both performing and implementing correct calibration procedures. If you have any further questions about the terms defined in this video, please leave a comment below.